Hello and welcome to Monday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And today we're going to have a look at a puzzle by a constructor who has quickly become one of my favourites, Codec. And this one is called Brambles, I presume on account of the numerous prickly arrows we can see in the grid. Um, uh, and the testing reports, by the way, on this puzzle are that it is absolutely sensational. Um, so this one is really one to, to make sure you make time for, I think. Um, on this day, where are we? 28th, 28th of December, not far from the new year, roll on what hopefully will be a much much more normal 2021. Uh, right, before we get started on this, a couple of things to mention. Do check out our new Killer Sudoku app. It is getting, well, it's going great guns. It's got great reviews. We're very proud of it. And if you do try it, we know you'll love it. So uh, do check it out. It's available on all platforms. We still get correct solutions in uh, for tracking the cryptid. Our Sudoku puzzle hunt that's available over on our Patreon page at the moment is by Stefan Bura and Akash Jain, and they have done some job creating this. Um, it's been entertaining puzzlers now for the best part of a month, and the reviews have been incredible. Uh, and well done, I've got to say well done to Jan Moss, Stephen Williams, and Paul Tarjan. Uh, who have managed to successfully solve it in the last 24 hours. And we are going to have to release the video uh, showing showing you how to solve it in the next day or two. So seriously, if you, ha if you are still working on it, please do try and get your entry in really soon if you want to shout out. Um, now, what are the rules of Codex New One? What we've got simple rules today. We've got normal Sudoku rules apply. And then digits along an arrow must sum to the digit in its circle and digits may repeat along an arrow. So uh, let's try and pick a, an easy one to think about. I mean, if we look at this arrow here, what this is basically this circle is the sum of those two digits. And we could even put one in both of those digits so that this could in theory be a two. Uh, you can see one can repeat because it's not sharing a row, column or box. So that's how the rule works. As I say, fairly straightforward. Do have a go. The way to play, as usual, is to click the link under the video. And with that, I get to play. Let's get cracking. Um, so my eyes are drawn to two places immediately. First is this sort of strange symbol type arrangement in the top left of the grid. Secondly, this arrow, which looks to be the longest in the puzzle. This is a four cell arrow. Now the irritating thing about this four cell arrow is that each of these dominoes could contain a one and a two, which means this square actually doesn't have to be that high. It could be as low as six. You know, if we had one, two, one, two, for example, that would be completely fine. Why is my phone buzzing at me? Oh, that's fine. That's just WhatsApp. WhatsApp nonsense. I'm sure you're all familiar with that. Um, this arrow, look at that. That's summing three cells in the same row. So the minimum I could make those cells would be six uh, by putting one, two and three into them. So we can we know this circle must be at least equal to six. This one as well, that's summing three um, digits in the same box. So all of these have to be different. So again, we get a six, seven, eight, nine here. I'm not sure where this is going. That's got to be six, seven, eight or nine for exactly the same reason. That one's only summing two. That one is a very short arrow. That's basically saying those two digits are the same. Um, so we probably have to look up at the symbol, don't we? So we've got... Okay, well, so the way I think about this, which may be complete bobbins, but the way I think about this is that those four cells there are obviously in the same box. So they have a minimum value of 10. These two cells have a minimum value of 3 because they can be 1 and 2. So if we consider those together you can see that the minimum value of these uh, these two circles here is 10 plus 3, which is 13. So, hmm. now the irritating thing about that is that somewhat bizarrely, it does seem possible to make one of these arrows a 4. If we make that a 4, for example, I could go 1, 2, 1 there. And then this arrow would be 9. 
Oh no, that's not going to work, is it? Because we can't keep this down. Um, because I can't repeat two, I can't put two in any of those squares, and I can't put one in any of those squares, that actually won't work. So, so perhaps we, well, if we can't use four and five and eight, yeah, I think that might work. Um, now, can I keep this down by repeating the two? I can. Ah, something like that would work, wouldn't it? Right, okay. Okay, so what does all this tell us? The answer is not as much as I was hoping. I think what it tells us, let me just delete these cells, is that these two cells are even less restricted than a cell like this, because in theory one of these could be a 5. So that is not what I was hoping for at all. Oh, no, hang on, I've made a mistake. Well, not a mistake, but an oversight. This... Ah, ah, hang on. This domino here is restricted a little bit because it is in the same row as this triomino. So, ah, so if I make these one and two, these squares would be impossible to fill because they would be have a minimum value of 12, and this has to be a single digit total. So, so how do I get a handle on, ah, okay, I know how we can think about this. So I'm going to delete this because I think it's nonsense. Right, these squares have a minimum value of 10. These squares have a minimum value of 15 because they're all in the same row. Now 10 and 15 is 25. So the minimum value of these three arrows is 25, which is a lot better. Because even if this is 9, this has to add up to 16, which means it has to include a 9. Um, yeah, so, okay, so either this, either this is 9 and this is 7 and 9, or this is 8 and this is 8 and 9. So there's definitely a 9 in this domino. There's definitely no 6 and 7 in this cell. Um, so there must be, there must be a 5 and a 6 in here. Actually, is that right? Hang on a moment. Is that right? Because I'm assuming there that this, this can't be 1, 2, 3 and 5, for example. But it can, can't it? If that's... Oh, no. No, it can't. 25 is what we're getting here, isn't it? So is 26 possible? 26 is possible. No! Oh, bother. Twenty six is possible because this could be nine eight and this could be um this could be nine again. Is there anything to prevent that? The problem with the problem with twenty six being possible is it introduces degrees of freedom everywhere. Um, because if 26 is possible, either these could be 1, 2, 3, 4, and these are 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6, or these are 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, um, and these are 1, 2, 3, and 5. Oh, this is... Oh, I'm so cross with myself. Um, so... Well, there has to be a 6 down there. That's where we can get to. That means there's no 6 here, I suppose. Because we can't possibly put three nines into these three squares. We can't make them 27. So we've only got one degree of freedom as a maximum between all of these cells. We can increase one of them by one, and that's all we can do. Um, 
No, okay. This is a bit of a disaster. So, in fact, these squares need to have five added to them as a possibility, and these squares need to have six added to them as a possibility. <laughs> now we know there's a seven in one of those three squares. That is not looking useful. And we are completely bamboozled by this puzzle. Um... So, what on earth do we do now? Uh, <laughs> I don't know what to do. Uh, I'm sorry about this. This could be a bit of a short video. I feel like I've sort of instantly hit a wall with this one. Um, so the fact that these all have to be lower than seven. So there's got to be a seven, there's got to be an eight and a nine in one of these as well. Uh, what on earth are you meant to do next? Maybe I've got to use this arrow somehow. Now I know this can't be a six. That's just not it's just not useful. The overwhelming likelihood is that this is this is going to be a high digit anyway. But even if it's a seven, one, two and one three, it would force ones into both both dominoes, which uh, it doesn't affect anything, that's the problem. Um, I think I'm missing, I think I'm missing something fairly fundamental about this. Uh, what other tricks can we do with arrows? We can We know parity of arrows, don't we? Maybe that's what I've got to think about. Parity. How on earth can we use parity here? By parity, all I'm saying is we looked at this in a puzzle. I think I did it even on Christmas. Did I do it on Christmas Day? I'm not sure if I did it on Christmas Day, but it's. Uh, it was very recently we looked at a situation where if you think about an arrow, whatever the arrow adds up to, so whatever these three squares are, it doesn't matter if they're odd or even, because once you add in the the, the bulb of the arrow, you're you're doubling that number. If you double an odd number, you get an even number. If you double an even number, you get an even number. So we always know that arrows, in total, add up to even numbers. So this this adds up to an even number. So this adds up to an odd number. That's not useful. Um, oh, we could do some crazy stuff, actually. Actually, this is not a stupid thought. Oh, this, this is not a stupid thought. Right, let's... Right. Hang on a minute. Let's look at. I'm, I'm just, sorry. I'm just playing around with this because I'm trying to get my head around. Um, actually, maybe I'm maybe I'm misleading myself here about how important this is. I'm not sure. What I was thinking is. I know those cells, they're all, uh, they're a complete set of two bulbs and two arrows. So these add up to an even number. Now, what do columns one and two add up to? Well, a single column of a Sudoku adds up to 45 because it will contain all of the digits from one to nine. So two whole columns of a Sudoku add up to 90. Now that means I know those squares add up to an even number given I know these add up to an even number and the total for the column is even. So these add up to an even number. 
Now, Yeah, maybe, maybe. So uh, let's just remember these are even. I'll color them in. What's the color I meant to use for even numbers? It's blue, I think. So these are even. Now look, these are also even because that's a complete set of their arrows and their bulbs. So they're even as well. So let's color those in blue. All of these are even. Now, this might work actually. I might be able to work out the parity of this arrow. This is two complete boxes of a Sudoku. Well, they add up to 90 as well. 90 is even, a knowledge rocket from Clack Crack and the Cryptic. So now, now we know all of the blue cells add up to an even number, but what do five complete rows of a Sudoku add up to? Well, they add up to an odd number because each row individually is 45, five lots of 45, is most certainly, well, it's 225. So we know it adds up to an odd number. Now that means these cells must add up to an odd number because we know that blue is even, but the overall total is odd. Now, if these add up to an odd number, what can we say about this box? This is it. I know the value of this cell, don't I? Wow. So. <laughs> Yeah, if these add up to odd, an odd number, in order to make sure that the whole box adds up to 45, those must be even. Now, if these are even, that square can't be a 9 and is an 8. And this is hugely important because now I can, I can rule out my 26 option for these three squares. This, you know, this has to add up to 25 um, because we know it needs to add up to at least 25 and it now can't add up to more than 25. So we can remove the seven. This is an eight, nine pair. We can get rid of all the highlighting, I think. Um, let's just get rid of the highlighting. We can get rid of the possibility of there being a five in here. We can get rid of the possibility of there being a six in there because we know that actually these have to add up to 25. Now, now I know that this is five, six, and seven. Now, doesn't that, doesn't that mean this is a naked single? Because I've got one, two, three, four, five, eight in the row and six, seven in the column. So there's a six, seven pair, sort of a hidden six, seven pair there, which means this square is a nine. Now, let's just think about this for a second, because I think we can do better than this. We know that this is these three squares are adding to eight, so they must include a one. Therefore, there's no one over here. So this, these add up to eight. So we've got eight, 16, 16 and 22, 38. These are adding up to 7. So they're either 2, 5 or 3, 4. Um, 5, 6, 7 here is looking at that cell. So this square is now... Ah, oh, this square is 8. Sorry. How can I look at the 5, 6, 7? Eliminate the 7 and not notice the big 9 until afterwards. That is... Oh, that's me all over. Um... So this is now adding up to eight. This arrow is restricted now because that's quite large. So this square can't be more than four. Um, so, so that square's got to be a minimum of six now. I feel like like we've we've really we've really made good progress. I'm just not quite sure how we convert the good progress into into more value. Um, what do we do next? This oh, that's quite interesting. That cell's got to be quite small now because. The remaining digits I've not put in column three are one, two, three, and four. Well, you can never put a one or a two 
on the end of a two cell arrow. So this is a three or a four. So there's definitely a one in one of these two cells. It's either one, two or, or it's one, three. This could be four, one, one, two, that could be three. Would that work? Four, one, no, maybe that wouldn't work actually. I have a feeling that would make this too high. If there's a four in the, in this pairing, this has a minimum value of three if it's one and two. So this would have to be four and one. And the moment this is four and one, and this also contains a one, you can't put a one on, on this domino. So that doesn't work. There's no four in here, which means this is the four. So this is one, three. So maybe this arrow now. The reason I think this arrow is interesting, by the way, is because this one, two, three triple here we can eliminate one, two, and three from this arrow because wherever the one goes, it will see one side. It'll either see this square or this square. And given these two digits are the same, um, we can therefore eliminate one from this arrow. And for the same reason, we can eliminate two and three. So this can't be one, two, three, or four, but it can be five, I think. Um, five, six, and seven look like the possibilities, don't they? It can't then be eight and it can't be nine. So I think these have to be five, six, or seven. Which, not sure what that means. Um, This is complicated. <laughs> um, is there more we can do? Which arrow? I don't even know which arrow I'm meant to look at here. I have to be honest. Um, oh, wait a second. I've not put nine in the central box. You can't, you can never put nine on an arrow because obviously then you'll have to put a 10 at least in, in the circle. So nine has to go there. Ah, so nine has to be in one of these two cells. Nine can't be there, so this can't be four anymore. Um, okay, is that useful? The answer <laughs> is I don't know yet. four here has ruled out four from these two squares. So this is two five, that eliminates five from those two squares. That's interesting because now this cell jumps out at me because where does whatever go in this, goes in this cell go in this box now? Well, you can see because, you know, if this is a three, if this is a three, this will be a one and the only place for three in the box is there. So basically this cell and this cell become mirrors of one another. Now eight has to make an appearance in exactly one of those two cells, which means eight has to be in one of these three squares. And look at that, eight can't be here because if eight is here, the only way of keeping this down to a single digit total is with a one here. And the one we know is in this line in order to make this cell eight. So we, in fact, we've now got an eight, nine pair in box six. Well, we're sort of edging towards a quadruple in column seven, perhaps. Five. So here we've got one, three, two, three, four, five. This is six, seven, and eight. Let me just fully notate that. So, oh no, we've almost got a quadruple in column one as well. One, three here. 
We've also, oh, that's weird. We've got to put five on the end of one of these arrows. Well, that's going to be tricky, isn't it? Oh. Ah, no, actually, this is strange. I thought the five would be more interesting because obviously it's a high digit. But actually, I think the two is more interesting because look at the way that these arrows are drawn here. If this is two, it eliminates two from the other arrow, which means there has to be two twos. So if this was two, you'd have two twos on this arrow. So that means whichever of these is a two has an eight above it. Because if you have two and then another two, you can see you can't get to nine. Five is not an option for those four squares. So. Yeah, so this can't be a two. This can't be a two. Because if this is a two, the two can't be in there. These two squares have to be a two, four pair in order to allow this to be eight. But now this is a two, four pair. And look, I've now got three cells in column one that have to be the digits one and three. Well, that's not going to work. That's beautiful. That's really beautiful. So this has to be five. This has to be two, which means this is eight. This is nine. This is a one, three pair. And this is a two, four pair. And we are now... Yes, now we get an 8 here. Um, now we get... What do we get? I don't know. We've got 6 digits in effect though in this column now. We still need 4, 5 and 9 into those squares. So there's 4, 5 and 9. Uh, that's really weird as well. It's not really given me very much, to be honest. It's... Ah, uh, no, the two five here, I can use those over there. This is now one, three, and four. So my eyes are now drawn to this arrow. This has to be relatively large, doesn't it? Because the minimum I can make those squares would be a 2-5 pair. Oh, no, hang on. This 9 is fillable. This 9 is a 6-7-8 in the box. So you can't put 1-8-2-7 or 3-6 on this arrow. It's got to be 4-5. That 4 tells us the order. This is 4-5. 4... Five. four five. These two squares are from 1, 2, and 3. Must include a 2. 2's in one of those squares. Um, it's 2 in one of these squares. Now 2, 5 can't be on this arrow here because the 2 and the 5 are in row 5 in this box. So... Oh, okay, so this square has to be a 2, because if it's not, the, the minimum I can make those two squares would be 5 and 6, which is definitely too high. So this is 2. This must be 6 or 7. Oh, I think either is possible. So this is 8 or 9. These squares are five, six, and seven. Ah, now hang on, we've got eight, nine here. Nine? I was about to say nine can't go on the arrow, but in fact, eight can't go on this arrow either. It's a three cell arrow. So nine and eight. Yeah, well, there's something here. This 8-9 pair can't go in this domino because of this cell. If they go, if we had 8-9 in this domino, we'd have three cells that had to be 8-9 in the column. So 
one of them has to go in here which is nice because that limit ah yeah that's very nice it gives us an eight nine pair in column seven and one of them is in this domino and joins up with this one which is not that helpful but we get an eight nine pair so we should beggars can't be choosers we shall take our eight nine pair now this has to be six or seven so this either has to be one two and three to make six or one two and four to make seven there's definitely a one and a two in this triple and there's a two here so there's definitely a there's definitely a two in one of these cells and okay do we know anything else that feels like it was really nice logic but it's just plowed into a dead end um five three six what am i missing here am i missing anything obvious i probably am um maybe this arrow yeah okay let's look at this arrow because these two cells are a little tricky yes these two cells combined with these three cells are are tricky because I, because i think the point is you can't make these two squares you can't select these two squares from one, two, three, and four, because if you do, there are five cells in the row that have to be one, two, three, and four, and that's most certainly too many. So one of these two cells has to be larger than one, two, three, and four. So it's got to be at least five, but it can't, it can never be seven. You could never put a seven in here because there are two more cells to fill and you will, you will break the total of nine. So one of these two squares is a five or a six. Right, okay, well, I can see some things I'm going to get from this because if one of these squares is five or six, and it is, there now has to be a one in this sum because if we try five and nine, for example, you still, the other two cells have to be one and three. So, so there's definitely a one in this triple. Now there's definitely a one in that double as well. So now, how many ones are there in this puzzle in row two and row three? Well, it's not a trick question. The answer is there are two ones because there's one in this row and there's one in this row. Well, we know there's one in that in this domino and there's one here. So there can't be any more ones in row two and row three. In particular, this cell cannot contain a one. And once this cell can't contain a one, this cell well, this square now can't be six because the minimum I can make these two add up to is seven. And this cell can't be a seven because that would mean I needed a nine here, which I can't have. So there's, there's a couple of deductions we get from that, all of which adds up to no more than a hill of beans, um, or not even a hill of beans. Ah, now, uh, or, ah, okay. Well, let's let's carry on then with this column. There's now no one here, so there must be a one in one of those two squares because this is a one, two, three triple. That means there's no one in this square. I feel I'm clutching at straws here. This really. It's really desperate stuff, isn't it? Trying to get some sort of deduction. Um, has that done anything for me? Then there must be, if this was two, three, that would be one, that would be three, and this could be one, two, and that would add up to eight. Yeah, okay. Um, bobbins <laughs> um, so we know one of these is a five or a six if it's a six we'll have to have one two pair that would that then would have to be a one because it can't be a two 
So if there's a six down here, which there could be, you've got to put a one here. And you've got to put a two there actually, because the six would have to go in this position. Now, if on the other hand, there is a five in here, which is very possible, then I need one three into the other positions. So this would have the option of being a three. This could be a one or a three. That could be a one or a three. That's not any good, Simon. Um, oh, it does give us a one three pair. Ah. Oh no, one three pair in this row. There's sort of a virtual one, two, three, four, triple. Oh, ah, there's no four in here. Okay, well, that's useful. So, where does the four go? We know that because one of these is a five or a six, the other digit uh, in this domino will be a one, two, or a three, which creates, look, a one, two, three triple in the row. So that square is a four. That square's a two. That's, it's not done anything, has it? It's not done anything. Um, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. So, oh dear. <laughs> um, can I really not limit this any further? I've just got an eight, nine pair there. Sorry about this. I have a feeling I'm being really slow about this. I'm just not spotting something that I ought to spot. Um, how long have I had? 37 minutes. That's not too bad. It's not an easy, it's definitely not easy, this puzzle. Um, I will argue with anyone who claims otherwise. So what is it that I'm missing? Um, not use this arrow yet, but we don't really know anything about this arrow. So I don't feel like that's going to be very profitable. But again, I'm, I could be missing something. I feel like it's this row where I've made the most progress and haven't been able to sort of convert it into a win. I've got to put a 9 in this row. Where does the 9 go? Well, the nine could quite easily go there. Or the nine could go here. Now, is there anything wrong with that? The nine goes here. I don't see what's wrong with that, I have to say. One, three, six, seven. This eight, this being ones and twos, is that helpful? If I knew there was a one here, it, it might be a little bit helpful. Eight, nine. This cell and this cell are the same, aren't they? Because of this eight, nine pair there. So that means these three cells are the same. Maybe I'll color them. This is the same as whatever goes in this domino. So if this was eight, eight would have to go here. If this was nine, nine would have to go here. just doesn't doesn't seem to be good enough to be honest I have to be honest I don't think this is helping me so let's let's label these squares up we know that these squares are not one two three and four 
we know this one isn't 5 or 8, so this one is 6, 7 or 9. Is there something about that I meant to appreciate? <laughs> this one is... Oh, I just done that. I did that yesterday as well. This one is also 5, 6, 7, 8 or 9. See, it's really close, isn't it? To a quadruple there. It really is. So... If I could, maybe I could do it with this square. Can th but this square could be a four, I think. That's so, it's so nearly a quintuple on five, six, seven, eight, and nine here. But this square, which can't be one, two, or three, can be four. So I think this can be four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine, which is not quite good enough. Oh, now hang on though. Maybe I can try the same thing in column six. Because I'm just noticing I've got a six, seven pair there and a one, two pair here. So this square is more restricted than I realized. In fact, this square is very restricted. What can this square actually be? It can't, it could be three. It can't be four or five or six or seven. Or eight. This is a three or a nine. I don't believe it. Three or nine. So this square. This square can't be one or two. It can be three. It can't be four or five. No, this time it can be six or seven, I think. Six, seven or nine. And that gives me a quadruple here, does it? Because this square can't be one, two, three because of the the row. It can't be four, five, and it can't be eight. This is six, seven, or nine. And that is a quadruple. Good grief. Is this an important quadruple is the next thing we need to work. Ah, yes, it is an important quadruple. I've seen one reason it's an important quadruple. Let me just take a keep staring at it maybe I'll spot another reason um, yeah in fact one way to think about this is that there's a hidden one two pair in this column isn't there where do you put one and two in this column because this weird triple here rules out one and two from those squares so once you get this and this I mean it's not easy but the one and the two can only go in this position and this position. Now, the thing I've noticed that I'm hoping will be more useful even than this, though, is that where does the three go in this quadruple? It has to be in one of those two squares. Now, that's huge because that means this arrow can't have a three on it. If it can't have a three on it, it can't add up to six. So this is one, two and four which makes this square a seven. And that that is a hard earned seven, let me tell you. That gives me a six here, and a six here, and a seven here, and a seven here by Sudoku. It means that's not seven, that's not seven anymore. Um, You'll forgive me, I hope, if I take this relatively slow. That square's got to be 7. Just by Sudoku, these 7's interacting. That means that's not 7, which means this is 7. That's huge. That gives me an 8 there. So this is now not 8. This is not 7. These two have to add up to 8 now. That looks possible. 8 has to be in one of these two cells by Sudoku. Desperately trying to keep track of all of this. Um, so 8 is now in one of those two cells. These two squares now add up to 9. How, how has that been determined? 
That's from the seven. Not even sure how that got un unwound, but this being. Where did I get this seven from? I think this was a six seven pair, wasn't it? So I think it was by Sudoku. But once this became a seven, that square becomes a nine. And now we can use our we can use our highlighting. We know those are all nines by Sudoku. This is now eight. There has to be an eight by Sudoku in one of these two squares, which can only now go here. This square is not nine. Where does where does nine go in this row? It's got to go here. And suddenly I do feel like I've made real progress. Eight's got to be in one of those two cells. Still don't know. Oh, now this is nine. Maybe I do know. I still don't know what this is. It could have five or six on it. This nine fixes my weird double cell here. That's now got to be three. This square's a six or a seven. This three is ruling a three out from that square. Is it doing any more work than that? Probably, but I can't see what. That square can't be nine. This eight now, it's got two on both of its dominoes. So the other cells are one and three, but we don't know the order. These squares down here have got to be one, three, and seven. Do we know which way round that goes? The answer is... No. <laughs> um, sorry. Let me try and get somewhere. I've now got, look, I've now got five, six, seven, eight, and nine in this column. That affects that arrow. That's interesting. So this arrow here has to be a three or a four because we can't make a two cell arrow add up to less than three, which means there must be a one on this arrow, which means There's no one here. I've just noticed something else, which is, look, in this row, I've now got a one, two, three, four, triple, quadruple, I should say, which means that square is a seven, which means that square is a three. Oh, come on. That might be big because that now gives me a two, three pair here, which is going to fix. Well, no, it doesn't really fix it. It just, once we get this three, we know this is a one, two pair already, so... I'm not sure that has done as much as I was hoping. Um, right, sorry. Now I've got a one, two pair there as well, though, so which means that square's a four. That four means, uh, means two things. We remove four from that square, but far more interestingly, we get a three here. To remove three from that cell means this is now a one two pair you can see the two has to go on the right hand side of it so we get a one two pair that fixes the three up there that ought to be important i think because now these two squares need to act well we can't have a six on here now that's the key so this must be the six these two squares are five and one you may not know the order but the fact they're five and one is huge. It gives us the one and the three and the two. This arrow needs to add up to eight. We get the six and the five. The seven comes here. The six drops down there. This one fixes the one and the five. That means there's a one there, look. This is a three, four pair. The three tells us the order. Keep going. Um, there's a four here by Sudoku, I do believe. That puts a four there by Sudoku. This six fixes the six and the five in box six. 
that square at the top's a four, that should be something. A two. One, two, one, one, two. And these are five, six, and eight. We can put the five in. That gets us the five and the nine. The six, eight pair is also resolved by the six over on this side. That fixes the eight here. I think we're there. I think we're there. It's taken me a very long time. And for that, I apologize a little bit, but I will say, I don't think this is that straightforward a puzzle. Um, it had an awful lot of beautiful steps to it, but they were quite hard for me at least to see. Three, six, now this is four, five, and this four I'm hoping will be the, oh no, it's not. So what, what am I missing here? There must be another thing I'm missing. What digit is it that's helping me here? It's the nine, isn't it? The nine is looking down here. Nine and seven, seven and six, six and three, three and two, click check. Yes, what a brilliant puzzle. That is a brilliant puzzle. There's so much intricate logic, these sort of, these quadruples on one, twos, threes and fours that come out. The place I think I got really stuck was not noticing that this column had, um, had a high quadruple in it. Was it three, six, seven, and nine or something? Could only go into some weird collection of sh cells on this column. I probably should have spotted it more quickly, but I just didn't. And for that, sorry. Let me know how you got in the comments. And let me know if you agree that this is a beautiful, beautiful puzzle. Again, from Codec, just fantastic. And the logic, actually, I should mention that as well. The logic that gave me the eight here, because this, this has to add up to an even number was absolutely that was gorgeous i mean i don't know if that was intended but that that idea was absolutely lovely the way i could sort of build up the pattern down the bottom left over here and then sort of honing in on the value of these cells just fantastic stuff um as i say let me know in the comments if you enjoyed it thank you so much for watching back later with another edition of cracking the cryptic